welcome out to It's All Been Done Radio Hour. This week, we have a new episode of It's All Been Theater for you. Before we get to that, we want to thank It's All Been Done Presents, our wonderful host site. It produces podcasts, written work, video, and more. And you can check it out at IABD Presents, which just got a cool new redesign. Don't forget to support us at patreon.com slash IABD. A mere $2 gets you access to past and upcoming live streaming shows, as well as exclusive bloopers and video. And now, without further ado, it's All Been Done Radio Hour. Finally, we are proud to present It's All Been Theater. Good evening and welcome to It's All Been Theater. As always, I am your humble host, your stalwart storyteller, your lyrical lyricist, Sir Hubert Donald Redkin Five from Norwell Esquire the Third. Tonight I bring you the classic tale, Two Princesses. This story has been told countless times with many different variations, but none have brought the narrative to you quite the way I have, and this is the definitive adaptation. And so, without further ado, I present my superior version of the seminal classic, Two Princesses. (laughs) Our tale starts in a faraway kingdom long ago with an incredibly handsome and highly eligible prince named Aaron, who will soon be crowned King of Comes Two princesses, Rose of the Kingdom Spindoria and Honor of the Land of Whitegrass, have come to woo the lad and marry him to secure their regal futures. Prince Aaron receives them in his royal waiting chamber, away from the prying eyes of the court. Oh, lovely ladies who kneel before me, arise. Yes, arise, that's what I said now. What prompts you to travel all this way from your respective domains? Why, Princess Rose, you've come to ask for your hand, dear prince. Oh, uh, how flatteringly forward. Uh, I. Uh, Before you answer, most regal prince, know that I, too, have come to propose marriage. Mm-hmm. Well, I, uh, I don't know what to say. Not one beauty, but two have presented themselves to me. I am beyond humbled, but, oh, how shall I choose between you, each lovelier than the last? Well, Prince, I implore you to look beyond mere superficial appearances. Yes, yes, I intend to. Um, uh, it's only that uh, we've just met, so I have nothing else yet to go by. Perhaps you should court each of us individually on a private outing so you can learn why I am the better match. I like that idea. Sort of makes a game out of it. Uh, And perhaps the peasants would like to witness such a competition. You know, for entertainment purposes. And then I may present a rose to the victor. Hopefully more than just a rose. (laughs) Yes, indeed. (laughs) So, the extremely handsome prince... Uh, Would would you like uh, some help? You know, that's what I'm here for. (laughs) Fine, whatever, go ahead. Uh, Just make sure you read the script exactly the way I wrote it. So the prince... Oh, fine. So the extremely handsome prince agreed to date each of the princesses in turn over the next two days. First was Princess Anna, who met the prince for breakfast. Actually, it's Anna... My prince, your rise. It is nearly halfway through the day. Pardon, but it could not have been more than quarter hour since the cock did crow, my lady. And, and yet here you sit, uh, dressed for the grandest of balls, a, a large seal adorning your jacket. Mm-hmm. I always strive to look my best. Well, you certainly have succeeded, and then some. <laughs> so, uh, what repose shall break our fast this morn? <laughs> I took the liberty of preparing something special. Servants! Bring the platter! (laughs) 
A large plate is laid upon the table, carried by two servers struggling under the considerable weight. The lid is lifted to reveal a large pile of diamonds. Oh, 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 oh yes, uh, I, I forgot we had invited the people to watch. Um, uh, so, uh, what is this, my lady? Uh, Why, your highness, I wanted to demonstrate what I bring to the table quite literally. Oh. Immense wealth backed up by vast lands full of riches and resources to keep you comfortable all your life yet to come. Uh-huh. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. Lock her down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, my lady, I am a prince. I already live a life of wealth and luxury. <laughs> uh, this castle? <laughs> it is a mere hovel compared to the estate we could construct together. Okay, wow. Princess Anna... If I'm if not I... being too presumptuous, you may refer to me as baby. Shh! Shut that kid up! <laughs> it is a term... Of... <laughs> baby? It is a term of endearment that will soon be quite in fashion. Uh-huh. I shall, uh, take your word for it. Go ahead now. Uh-huh. <laughs> The rest of the day unfolded in similarly grand fashion, with Princess Anna doing her best to demonstrate the most elaborate of lifestyles the prince would receive with her. The second date with Princess Rose began in quite a different manner. I, my prince, you are just in time rising as I have prepared a delectable spread for you. Oh, it smells as delightful as you are, uh, Princess Rose. Now, uh, what is it? It's a new dish that I've concocted myself, I'll call it Eggs Scrambled. <gasps> oh, my word, you've, uh, you've scrambled the over. How bold. <laughs> You'll find I am such, my prince. Enjoy. Oh, but will you not join me, dear princess? I had not intended to. Oh, but I insist, if you want to. All right, then. <laughs> After eating, the pair went for a walk to the castle marketplace. Oh, look, flowers. How lovely. May I purchase you some? Oh, I'm already satisfied with the rose in my company. Aww. Aww. I know, I'm good, right? <laughs> oh, sire! <laughs> uh, uh, but, but, uh, but my lady, or whatever is the matter? I must... I must confess something or in this. Uh, I, I can imagine no admission that could cause me to favor you less. It's, it is merely up in stance that I'm a princess. My kingdom is poor and disease-ridden, and I was the chambermaid, recently promoted to nearly everyone else had died off. I have no future, no family tree. <laughs> Oh, Princess Rose, I, I know what a prince ought to be, but I, I alas, am not that. I, I fear I may be falling for you, and I trust my heart more than some arbitrary lineage. But, 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 but if you were to end me, your father would disown you. Yeah, he will. Shut up. Hey. <laughs> My father is too ill to do any such thing. I shall soon be king, and who I marry is my decision, and my decision alone. If you like to tell me, maybe... What I'd like is to talk for hours. Oh. Well. Go ahead now. <laughs> the rest of the date was spent in one another's company, enjoyed getting to know each other. The next day, the prince gathered both princesses together for the rose ceremony, for which he would announce his decision. I would like to start by saying that these past two days were among the best of my life. Getting to know each of you was a rare treat, and it has been a difficult decision to choose twixt between you. My offer? Marry her or marry me? <laughs> Hmm? I'm the one that loves you, baby. Can't you see? Yeah, choose her! Mm. Uh, hang on. 
As I was saying, it has been most vexing, but I believe I have come to a compromise that will serve all of us. All of us? Yes. I shall marry Princess Anna of the Land of White Grass and keep Princess Rose of the Kingdom Spindoria as my consort. <gasps> Well, thank you. Pardon? <laughs> well, she has the money, and you don't have anything to go back to. This way, I can keep sleeping with both of you, uh, so it all works out. Mm. Right? But is that even legal? Well, <laughs> absolutely. This isn't a Christian kingdom or anything. Hell yeah. well, no, it's not. <laughs> Preach. That's true, yeah. <laughs> well... She's quite comely. Hmm. I'll agree to the, uh, the arrangement on one condition. Oh, ask, a, ask away, my love. Princess Rose shall be my lover as well. I find a man doesn't always meet all of my <clears throat> needs. Oh. Just me? Fine. <laughs> then it shall be so. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 stop. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes. No, yes. no, 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 yes. no, yeah. uh, no, no, yes. no. Like I said, yes. I haven't been a royal very long, and I don't know all the val- rules and traditions, And but if, if this is the freaky shit you all get into, I'll go back to being a chambermaid. A chambermaid who sleeps with us? That would make you ever so much more useful. No! <laughs> Jeez, hey, come on, come on. A pity, but as king and queen, I am certain we can find other lovers. Oh, most assuredly. On it. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> Have a nice trip home, dear. I. Uh, girl. <laughs> well, she was a sweet girl, wasn't she? Quite. So, that is uh, the two princesses. The moral of this story is that everyone has different sexual preferences. Some more straight-laced than others, and rich people can do whatever they want. But you already knew that, didn't you? Until next time, I have been Sir Hubert Donald Redkin Fievel Norwell Esquire. The third. <laughs> and this is It's All Ben Theatre. Good night, sleep tight, and listen to the spin doctors. They aren't just for the 90s. That's not... Oh, just for the 90s. The end. It's All Been Done Radio Hour number 287. It's All Been Theater. Episode number five, Two Princesses. This episode was written by Jerome Wetzel and directed by Nick Argenbright. It starred Dan Kondo as Hubert and Prince Aaron, Alyssa Ryan as Princess Anna, Samantha Stark as Princess Rose, and the rest of the cast as the peasants. The episode was narrated by Darren Essler, and our Foley artist is Seamus Talty. Our technical director is Shane Stefanchik. Our music director is Kristen Green. Theme songs are composed by Nathan Haley with lyrics by Jerome Wetzel, and the podcast is edited by Chris Allen. Check out our website at iabdpresents.com. Our next live show is Saturday, April 10th at 5 p.m. Get your tickets now at iabdpresents.com. Have a great week! Pardon, but I could not have been more than quarter hour since the cook did the cock. The cook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, flowers. How lovely. May I purchase you some? Oh, that should be a damn lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keith! Keith did not do, Keith did not do a proofreading this month. He's gotta fix my mistakes. If you were to wed me, your father would disown you. Sam. Sam. Ooh, there's a line for me? Yeah. No, right. What? Uh yeah. yeah, he will. Get that. Yeah. He Get will. That. <laughs> yeah. Go girl. <laughs> Go, girl. Yeah, he will. Oh. But she never made you sleep to
of us, that would make you ever so much more useful. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's all been done presents who's got the time